Hello, welcome to another edition of Crypto Talks. I'm Sage and today we have Danielle Marie with us, an expert who is a blockchain trainer and assessor. So Danielle is also the founder of She's Blockchain Savvy. And she'll be sharing her professional insights about blockchain and its emerging capabilities with us today. So welcome to the show, Danielle, great to have you with us. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, loud and clear. Perfect, fantastic. <laughs> yes, off to a good start. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I'm in Melbourne, so I'm in the business centre, so I'm out of my uh, normal oh. office. Uh, yeah. Great, well, there's no problems so far. Um, so, Danielle, we need to hear from your perspective. What are the, the major blockchain trends that are to be expected this year? We've noticed some trends from last year. Um, was a bit of an NFT gaming year, maybe DeFi as well. What do you think is going to happen this year? Uh, well, you know, it's really quite hard to predict what's going to happen, but I do think that there's a couple of trends that we can expect to see. And I think there's going to be a big focus on scaling solutions and interoperability between the different networks as we really need to find some solutions to these problems before we can kind of gain mass adoption of uh, blockchain technology and for them to be really realistically kind of applied to solving some real world problems. Uh, the next one is the metaverse has really gained a lot of popularity in 2021. Um, it got a lot of attention. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of these metaverses that are in the building stages. They're going to start to opening up for their beta testing towards the end of the year. Um, and that's going to really open up a trend of creating some disruptive business models um, and allowing them to emerge inside of this metaverse. I also think it's going to be the year we're going to see uh, more central bank digital currencies enter in the market. Not that I completely agree with that, but it's going to be a really interesting space to watch um, as it all unfolds for the industry as a whole. Um, and the last thing is regulation. I think that we're going to see a lot of regulation starting to enter in the market, especially after, um, especially with stable coins, after this whole recent Luna collapse. Um, and I actually think it's a really good thing for the industry uh, so that we can get rid of the projects that are not genuinely trying to solve some of the real world uh, applications uh, that blockchain can solve and get rid of those speculative meme coin projects. So right. those are the top things that I can think mm -hmm. to see. Thank you for sharing your thoughts there. Um, yes, so layer two protocols, that's interesting. And coming into a bear market, I wonder how that's going to um, work but it'd be interesting to see. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Um, so how crucial of a role do you think blockchain would play in the development of the metaverse? Another area where you see a trend emerging and much more institutional interest into the metaverse. Um, how crucial do you think blockchain will be to further development of this space? Uh, well, you know, creating blockchain-based metaverses opens up a, an amazing opportunity to kind of create a virtual world that will really change the way that people interact and exchange value. And the, the metaverse in general, whether it be centralized or decentralized, is going to change the way that we live, communicate, and, and do business. But when you're building a metaverse on top of a blockchain network, it's really providing the ecosystem to be able to create and own and monetize these digital assets. In centralized metaverses, um, such as the popular one that everyone's been talking about, Meta, it's just a big corporate company that, you know, uh, they're really the only ones that kind of benefit from a monetary perspective. Perspective. And these decentralized metaverses are allowing communities to be, you know, owned by the people for the people and creating whole new ecosystems, which is really, really exciting when you start to think about it. Yes, I like the fact that um, you'll be giving back the ownership of user generated content to the content creators. That's an exciting part for me. And the whole democratization Definitely. of the internet and how it's tying in with the metaverse and Web3. Now, great segue to the next question, and you might have more insights to share on that too. What scope do you think NFTs have this year? Oh, well, you know, I think uh, I love, actually, I was flying down from Brisbane into Melbourne and inside the magazine was a whole article on NFTs. So I think it's amazing that the amount of exposure NFTs have gotten. 
but I really think we're going to see a major shift to real asset-backed NFTs, you know, as a digital representation of ownership and tokenizing these real world tangible assets. You know, although the NFT space has really exploded and has got a lot of attention for this digital artwork, there's uh, not been very much focus on how NFTs can actually be really applied to real world assets, uh, which is what I personally think is the real superpower behind NFTs. Well, that's so well said. Yes, very true. The NFTs in the art world is definitely generating a lot of interaction activity and maybe getting people into crypto who weren't necessarily interested in the first place. That's that's interesting. 100%. Um, but Definitely. real estate industry is kind of also going to be interesting to see what NFTs can do there. Do you have any insights to share on that before we move on? Um, uh, not so much. I know that there's a lot of fractionalization with real estates happening, mm. um, but I'm, uh, you know, work quite closely with a, a university project out of QUT called Smart Trade Networks, and they're really focusing on the food and the supply chain industry and how we can be using these NFTs to be able to track and source the provenance of our food. Um, so yeah, lots happening in the supply chain industry around provenance of food especially at this time, that is so important, food security. Yes, thank you for sharing that with us. Now, do you think the eagerness of women to learn about blockchain and related tech is growing these days? A hundred percent, you know, although it's still a very much a male dominated industry, um, there are a lot of women that are entering in the space and it's really kind of exciting. And I'm only going to think it's going to continue to grow as it's not really known as this men's playground anymore. Um, and generally, I kind of think the best way to get more women involved is to encourage more women into entering in the space and showcasing other women of the, the achievement and the success that they've had um, and really mentoring those that are interested in entering in the space. And that's why I created She's Bought Chain Savvy is to empower more women to enter in the space. And from when I very first got involved a couple of years ago, um, it excites me when I walk into a room how many women are in there. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that it's continuing to grow. That's fantastic to hear. So with a lot happening in the space, will blockchain kickstart a new wave of social networks, do you think, in your opinion? Um, well, you know, Blockchain-based social media platforms have been around for a while, um, but they haven't really kind of taken off yet due to some scalability issues, uh, which, you know, we talked about kind of that uh, scaling with the layer two solutions. So I do think that we could see a new whole social wave um, and understanding kind of the importance of understand, uh, owning your own data and having kind of sensor resistant platforms is really quite critical um, at this particular time. And these decentralized platforms are designed to restore the power back into these to the users and the creators of this content and this transformative internet movement is really gonna be a paradigm shift on how we use social media and I also think you know all the hype around Elon Musk purchasing Twitter will definitely push some attention towards decentralized media platforms so it's gonna be really interesting to see how it all plays out fantastic thank you so much Danielle as we start to wind up the discussion now Cryptocurrencies have had a bit of a stormy year so far, <laughs> and we've heard some big names talking about meteoric rise still of both Ethereum and Bitcoin. What's your opinion? Do you see an upward trend later this year? Um, well, the market is so, so unpredictable, and I always say to my students, all of my educational content, it's not financial advice, but uh, uh, look, what happened to Luna practically overnight? Um, generally, I personally think that we're in a bear market into the next Bitcoin halving. Um, at this time, people should be really investing in their education and trying to understand the differences between the projects, especially projects like uh, Luna that is an algorithmic stable coin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a real big believer in dollar cost averaging and having a diverse portfolio and the bear marks are the perfect time to set yourself up for a really long term strategy. So in my personal opinion, no, I think we're in a bear market and mm -hmm. uh, we'll be here for a little while. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. It really was valuable connecting with you today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Enjoy your stay in Melbourne. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Danielle Marie. She is the founder of She's Blockchain Savvy, as well as being a blockchain trainer and assessor. For the full interview, head to Calkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these excellent live expert talks and market insights. 
And until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calcai Media.